Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about a 4K release by Shout Select, Shout Factory, called The Magnificent Seven. You probably already know what this is, but I'll give you a brief rundown. It is essentially a remake of Seven Samurai, uh, which I just found out was called The Magnificent Seven on its American release, which is confusing. It only came a few years later, maybe four years later in 1960, and obviously it's got an all-star cast, Yul Brenner, Steve McQueen, Eli Wallach, Charles Bronson, there's a lot of people in there. It's a great film, it's really well made, it's one of my favourites, I was very excited to get this because I used to watch this when I was a kid a lot. I really enjoy westerns, I used to watch them with my dad who loves westerns. Um, I think Clint Eastwood is probably my favourite actor in westerns, unsurprisingly, and I like a lot of his films, but this is my favourite. And it's probably because it is a remake of Seven Samurai, which is also one of my favourite films. It's just a great story that's been done a million times, and I don't think I'll ever get tired of watching it. Anyway, as far as this release goes, we'll just have a quick look at the technical aspects. So, uh, the aspect ratio is 235 by 1, which I believe is the original aspect ratio it was shot. It was 35mm anamorphic, um, so... It doesn't always produce like the most sharp image, especially around the edges, but at the same time, um, it was on 35mm film, which means it can be scanned. It has been scanned. Um, I've been advised this is not a brand new scan, um, but it looks like it is, so I don't know. It's certainly a different scan to the old Blu-ray. It has to be. The old Blu-ray, uh, I'm not a huge fan of. We'll get onto that later. So, uh, as far as the release itself goes, it comes with a 4K disc and a Blu-ray. The 4K is, of course, region-free, which is great, which means we can have this here in the UK and anywhere in the world. The Blu-ray, though, is region-locked. It's region A. Not so great, but I don't really care about that. I got this because it's 4K. Uh, the audio, original mono track in DTS HD Master. That's the one that I watched and is fantastic there's no issues there at all it also has a 5.1 surround sound if you prefer that or a 2.0 stereo track or dts hd master tracks but the mono was where it was originally so i i just went with that and i have no problem with it at all okay so as far as extras go most of them remain on the blu-ray they're probably ones that were on the original although i don't remember um, but on the actual 4K disc, it does come with commentaries by some of the actors and producers and also by a film historian as well. So that's a nice little bonus. Uh, next time I watch it, I will be watching it with the commentary because it's James Coburn and Eli Wallach. And they are pretty great performances in this. So I'd be really interested to know what they've got to say about it. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit just so we can have a quick look online um, at some of the images. I think they're quite telling, to be honest. Now, this is Capsaholic, and it's going to show us the old Blu-ray versus the new 4K. So, although it's... Uh, I'm not sure if this is the... Maybe this is the actual Blu-ray. No, it's the HD. Good. Okay. So this is the old Blu-ray uh, by MGM. And I think it speaks for itself, really. It's quite lifeless. There's not a huge amount of detail in there. People quite like this Blu-ray. I never did, to be honest. I think it looks really washed out. There's no great details in there. Uh, compared to the... Oh, I'd love to compare it. There we go. To the uh, UHD. And uh, this feels like a different scan. There's so much more detail. There's a really nice amount of grain in there. Um, not too much. It's not crazy. But they didn't DNR it to death or anything like that. Uh, the detail, all the lines, very crisp, very clear. There's not many, many colours in this film at all, in general. Like the, um, it's a western, so it's a lot of yellows, um, and dust and dirt and grime. There's a, a few instances here and there of colour, but they really pop a lot more, and people's skin tones look a lot more natural, I think. This just looks really washed out and, and terrible. In my opinion, I don't like it at all. The detail is stunning on it, absolutely stunning. I watched um, with a keen eye any scenes where there's writing in the background and it, it's quite clear on the 4K, whereas it was completely ineligible, rather, in the uh, Blu-ray. Um, 
And the most important thing for me, at least, is that they gateweave, um, which you might know as telecine wobble, um, where the um, film is being scanned. It goes through a gate, of course, and it might wobble around a little bit. And that translates often into um, the the finished product, but I didn't notice any gate weave on this 4K, and I did on the Blu-ray a lot. I think it moves around a lot. So the Blu-ray obviously not had a great deal of care taken over it, the old Blu-ray, uh, should I say, but this new version from Shout Factory, um, I didn't notice anything like that. I thought it was brilliant. Um, very stable, very stable image. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, it has to be a new scan. I can't imagine this is the same scan. If it is the same scan, then Shout have worked absolute miracles with it. Um, it is far and away the definitive way to watch this film. I want to pick on something that I thought was quite interesting, and that is that if you were in America and you wanted to buy this, you could go to Shout Factory and it's $35. And then you've got your shipping and your taxes on top of that and it comes out to about $46, which is about £37. And that's expensive. For any film, that's expensive. I don't care if it's 4K or Blu-ray. It's a lot. Um, if you love this film, of course, you're going to pay it. But what I thought was interesting was um, I imported this from... Um, Amazon US but here in the UK so I'm on Amazon.co.uk here and it's less than £30 to come from Amazon US so it's about £7.50 maybe more maybe £8 cheaper to import it here into the UK I don't know why that is but it's something that I'm starting to see more and more often and we'll come to it again at the end of the video um, so yes obviously I absolutely recommend this film. It looks great. It sounds great. The gate weave has gone. Delighted. The detail is back. I'm delighted. It's all fantastic. Um, should you go out and pick it up? I mean, obviously it's expensive. So I don't think it's going to get much cheaper, to be honest. And if you're in the UK, I'd say bite the bullet if you have £30 to spare and you love this film, because you will never see this film better, at least in the home. You will never see a better version of this film. I can't possibly imagine how they could do that. Uh, I wanted to have a quick look at Shout Factory as well, because White Arrow, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, they have a lot of different seemingly uh, unique sub-labels, I suppose. I mean, they're, they're very, a sub-publisher in a way. So they work with a bunch of different studios to release a bunch of different things, which is great. But they also have Shout Factory, Screen Factory, Shout Select, um, and these are all, I mean, it's obvious what, and Screen Kids, uh, sorry, Shout Kids as well. So Screen Factory is obviously, that's horror. Shout Kids is obviously for children and stuff. Shout Select is an interesting one. Uh, people say it's kind of trying to be a bit like Criterion, so they've got the numbered spines. I think it looks a bit more like Kino Lorber, to be honest, especially with this slip cover. Um, but it's numbered like Criterion, maybe that's what they're going for. Uh, I don't know exactly what the criteria is to make sure a film is a shout select, like Liar Liar is quite a good film, uh, but I don't know why it's shout select uh, as opposed to just shout factory. No idea. I tried looking into it. That's a great film. Oh, I need to see California again. Okay, so, and it's 1895. I mean, it's a Blu-ray. So, weird one. I, I, I'm starting to get a little bit frustrated with all the different labels under one different label. It's not easy understanding the differences or if that means that maybe this film had more care taken over it than another one. No idea. But regardless, this is Shout Select, uh, numbered... I think is it 144? Yes, it is. And it is magnificent. Well done, Shout Factory. I can't I can't be too mad at you for that. Um, but, uh, which is, uh, yeah, they're probably very happy with uh, that review. It's excellent. Go buy it. I don't know why it's collector's edition. I have no idea. Is is it going to go out of print? Is that is that the point? Why is it a collector's edition? 
there's nothing really here for me to suggest. It's got no booklet or anything like that. It's, it's just like the Kino Law, but it's very bare bones. You get the two discs, and you get a slip cover, which I don't care about, but it's I suppose it's nice enough. Uh, it's just the exact same artwork, by the way. Sorry, I just banged the microphone. It's just the same artwork on the f actual disc. I will show you. Sorry. I've been uh, I've been hiding too long. So, it's the same. And it's also the same on the back, too. Do you know? There's nothing really spectacular about this suggest special edition to me. It's just the discs. They're nice discs. Nice artwork on both of them as well. I think it's unique artwork on both. So I had to swap them over as well. The 4K goes on this side. People hate that, apparently. I don't care. So, yeah, it's a nice suitcase. It looks nice. Very, it's magnificent almost. Um, okay, so let's just have a quick little look at what else we've got to talk about. Personal thoughts on the film, might as well. Um, Obviously, I uh, used to watch Quint Eastwood a lot. I used to enjoy all the Dollars trilogy a lot. Uh, but this is just got the most happy memories, I suppose. And looking back, um, it still evokes happy memories and a lot of enjoyment. The characters are, are great. They're, there's interesting politics behind this film, which I find fascinating now, which I'll come on to in a second. Um, for me, I have two standouts. Obviously, Yul Brenner and E.Y. Walker, great, obviously. But it's all great. I love Steve McQueen, though. I love him. I love him anyway, but I love him in this film. I don't know why. He doesn't do loads. I just think he's cool, uh, but not quite as cool as our other favourite. So we also have um, James Coburn, who plays Brit. And James Coburn is, like, the best, well, one of the best gunslingers, but he's also the best knife slinger, too. He absolutely uses cool and watching it game this time i appreciated him way more i don't know why but well done james coburn you were fantastic in this film and i just had a blast watching it again they're all great though um charles bronson's obviously great there's there's so many people in this film it's, it's a magnificent seven and eli walk of course as well and even you know the the villagers they they're all good. It's all good. Great performances. The direction is... People have just call it competent. I think it's brilliant. You know, it does exactly what it needs to be done. It doesn't try and get too flashy ever. But every scene uh, looks beautiful. Uh, the composition of all the shots beautiful. It's obviously... It's not a shot-for-shot shot remake, of course. But so much inspiration from Seven Samurai. Um, where the meticulously crafted composition of shots is... The same, I feel like they've done the same. Um, you know, he's really gone out of his way um, to make sure that it looks fantastic, and it really does. Um, is it as good as Seven Samurai? Well, no, um, that's probably impossible um, because you're cutting out like an hour of Seven Samurai, it's just over two hours long. This film, which is plenty long for a movie, no doubt, but when you've got so many characters, what you get. Um, what you make up in a faster pace for, so the audience can enjoy it a little bit more easily perhaps uh, you lose a little bit of character development and I think that does show uh, there's a couple of character decisions where you're like I'm not really sure why they would have done that um, I'll obviously not spoil it it comes towards the end um, there's two characters in particular that we don't really spend quite enough time with and obviously in Seven Samurai we do and you understand the motivations a lot more uh, so in that respect, no, it's not quite as good, but it is brilliant. It, you know, it's, an, it's great, fun, enjoyable watch. Um, they don't credit Akira Kurosawa in the film, which I find strange. They do give a shout out to Seven Samurai in the opening credits, but not Akira Kurosawa by name. Interestingly, the 2016 remake of this, which I don't hate, by the way, I don't think it's nearly as good, but it's fine. Um, they do credit Akira Kurosawa, and this should have credited Akira Kurosawa because they are totally remaking his work. Um, one thing that I did find interesting, though, on rewatch, because it's been a little while since I've seen it, uh, two things. First of all, at the start, and I hope this isn't ruining it too much, there is an, an incident where 
a lot of white people in the movie, a lot of white townsfolk don't want a uh, an Indian who has been bur- who's been uh, killed and left basically in the dirt to be buried in the cemetery. And they make a point of suggesting that he's a man like anyone else and he deserves to be buried to the point where he's willing to get killed to to make sure that this happens. Your Brinner, that is. So you get a, a really good sense of your Brinner's character that he is a good man. And especially at this time, because don't forget, it might have been filmed in the 1960s, but this is set in the 1880s or 1890s or something. I don't know exactly what year, but the old West. So for someone to do that is quite, um, it would have been quite shocking. Not many people would have, would have had the guts to do that. So that suggests that he's a great guy. But the filmmakers, while their intent is somewhat noble in that respect, they do lean into what can only be described as a white saviour storyline. Um, you'll know that in the original film, Seven Samurai, it's just Japanese people. There's villagers, yes, and there's samurai and there's bandits. But in this film, they have to cross the border to save Mexican villagers, which is, seems kind of strange. I don't know exactly why they did that. They could have easily just had it like poor American people. Uh, but no, they have to be the saviours that go in to Mexico to save ignorant villagers, I guess. Uh, Weird. A a weird choice that I never really picked up on before. And I don't know if that's uh, necessarily an issue that permeates all Westerns. I think it might be. But um, I'm not... I'm not a... a uh, Sorry, I'm not an expert on all Westerns. So I wouldn't want to say it in... Uh, in its entirety, but why they d- chose to do that is a bit of a mystery, and I don't think they would do it today, and they didn't, even in 2016, because the remake doesn't do that. They have just an American, a new American town, a new American settlement that they have to save, and that makes more sense, and I think it works better. Um, it's not as good a film, unfortunately, but yeah, just an interesting thing to remember about this you know it's an old film so it's not always going to line up perfectly with modern sensibilities i suppose that said it's still great i still highly recommend it i'm going to watch this many times you will watch this so many times when you get it because it looks beautiful it's never looked so good okay so we're basically done going through the magnificent seven it's a great disc highly recommend it no doubt whatsoever if you can afford the thirty pounds, because it's a, it's a premium price, uh, that's Criterion prices, uh, then do go ahead and get it. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Um, I think you'll be able to get over any issues that you might have watching such an old film, and just appreciate it for the majesty of the whole situation. I hate to say, it, but it is a magnificent film, magnificent transfer, magnificent audio. Huge recommend, and I'm absolutely delighted because I was nervous. You know, I I really want a good version of this film, but Blu-ray wasn't. I really don't like that old Blu-ray. And, yeah, this is going to take pride and place in my collection, and I'm going to watch it many, many times. I can't wait to listen to the commentaries either. Brilliant. One last thing to talk about before I leave you probably for another week. I realise that it's been a little while since my last one. Summer's been so busy. Uh, I'm sorry, but then again, you probably don't want to see me too often anyway. So once a week was the plan, <laughs> once every couple of weeks is probably more likely. I've got loads of things that I want to talk about. Um, one of the ones that I want to talk about is another Shout Select release. And I'll just bring up the page again. So you don't hate me for this, but I had never seen Coraline before. <laughs> Which sounds, now that I'm saying it out loud, sounds ridiculous. Um, I'm not a huge fan of a nightmare. Uh, sorry, a nightmare before Christmas, which is the same director. I do like it a lot, and I watch it often at Christmas. But it's not like one of my most favourite films. So when I saw James and the Giant Peach, I wasn't that super enamoured with that either. They're great. They are great. I just it's just not my bag. So I never watched Coraline. But the other day, I must have been really bored because I just saw it uh, available to watch on streaming and I put it on and I absolutely loved it. 
So I went to find out if there was a 4K release, and there is, and it's also by Shout Factory. This is just in the last couple of days. So I went to Amazon again, and again, it's cheaper to import it from the US than it is after taxes and shipping in the United States. So the UK gets a good deal here, £24.30. I paid for it. It's going to take a little while to get here, of course. But when it does, I'm going to be talking about this. And I'm going to be talking about a couple of things that I think are interesting. And that is, this is a 2K upscale to 4K, which I am a, not a huge fan of so far. It, it almost seems kind of pointless to me. But it's going to have HDR, which is a huge selling point. Um, I should have mentioned the HDR in the Magnificent 7, which is over here, um, is, is really good too. The Dolby Vision, you won't be disappointed. Um, if that's the case with this, then I'd be delighted. But I, something about upscaling a 2K image and the idea that you can get like edging and uh, will it look quite as sharp? Will the Blu-ray that's in this package look even better? I don't know. We're going to have to find that out. I'm going to do a more in-depth comparison on that. This was such a good film. I can't believe how good this film was. Absolutely loved it. Um, other things that I want to talk about. How to collect on a budget. The next video will be how to collect on a budget. Um, it'll be my tips and tricks video. And then we'll be talking about why titles go out of print. And that why that makes some very expensive discs like Criterion's even more expensive and how annoying that is. So we've got a few things in the pipeline, certainly for the month of September and probably for the month of October. If you enjoy watching these and just basically me rambling on, um, then awesome, please subscribe. I've got, I think, 59 subscribers now. So each week, every couple of weeks, we, we build up a few more people. It'd be fabulous um, to get to know you all a bit better. So please comment. And then we can have a chat. That's kind of the main purpose why I do this. Because I like to talk about these films. Um, there's obviously no monetary incentive. It's costing me money. Uh, but I want to talk to people about films. And hopefully if people like what I have to say. Or they want to argue with me. Go into the comments. And we can have a chat. I try to respond to every message. I don't have many so it's not hard. But I will do that. Anyway. That's all I've got to say about Magnificent Seven. Oh, wait a minute. No, there isn't. There's one more thing. I want to talk about this. Oh, you're going to hate me. I should have wrapped this up ages ago. We've been going for 22 minutes. If you're still here, God bless you. So, apparently Steve McQueen was really desperate to be in this film. Uh, but the producer, who was on his TV show, said, No chance, you're on my TV show. So, he basically faked a car accident. Said that he had whiplash. And while he had time to recuperate, went and shot this film. How he didn't get sued into oblivion for that, I have no idea. But it's an amazing story. <laughs> That's why I love Steve McQueen. Um, so yeah, he went and filmed this while pretending to be injured from a car accident. But he set up, which he wasn't, just so he could get away. That's brilliant. Uh, there's so much about this film that's worth checking out and reading into, doing a deep dive into. But I think that's a funny story to end on. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks again so much for joining me, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.